Welcome everybody. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to this episode of Cooking with Mario. I'm Mario from the Newburgh Deli in Nazareth and also in Palmer Township near Easton. And I want to share with you today a dish um, that is absolutely going to be off the charts concerning um, your international quest for becoming a better uh, artist in the kitchen. This is a dish that you can put in one pot. This is a dish that's all-inclusive, super healthy, and it's got an Asian flair to it. I'll be back in a minute to show you how to make Asian-style Filipino mango chicken soup with a twist. Back again right after this. Have you ever experienced water damage inside your home or business due to a leaky pipe or a slow drip behind a wall? Be smart. Stop the leak before it happens using the latest smart app technology. With SmartFlow Pro, your all-in-one water security system, you can monitor your pressure, water temperature, water flow, and detect leaks by phone, receiving emails, texts, or push notices, and use the automated shutoff to stop every drip from wherever you are. Are you ready for 2020? Keep your home or business 100% leak-free with SmartFlow Pro. Hypothetically, it's, it's Tuesday night, 6 o'clock, you're a soccer mom, Husband's running late because he's stuck in traffic coming back from New Jersey. We're here in the Lehigh Valley. What do you cook for dinner? You know, you're tired of the fast food thing. You're tired of French fries and what have you, a surprise in the bag. Tonight, we're going to make a dish that is absolutely super nutritious for your family. Everyone's going to like it, and you're going to get all those food groups right in one pot. The Filipino-style mango chicken soup. You know, I really fell in love with Asian-type soups when I was in the service out in California in the Marine Corps. I used to visit a little place called Chin Chin's outside of Hollywood and they made this awesome, you know, Japanese style noodles with vegetables and broth. Oh my word, to die for. You know, growing up in Philadelphia, the closest thing you got to that was, you know, Italian wedding soup and you can't live on that all day. But here we got a, a soup of sorts that's hard enough as a meal. It'll dub, uh, you know, for a meal or a, a warm up for your other, your other main dishes. And it's called, uh, it's, it's really a hybrid. It's a hybrid of uh, arroz caldo, which is a Filipino tradition soup uh, that uses um, you know, various ingredients. But I kind of stepped it up a notch in that I'm adding, I'm adding some spinach to it, a couple other ingredients. My first impression of this type of soup you know, was, was about 26 years ago. And I'll tell you that story in a second. But first, here's how all this works. Your main component is this gorgeous chicken. You don't want to use chicken breasts. This is the tender chicken from boneless thighs. Leave the skin on because that's where the superpower flavor comes from. Your next main ingredients is going to be mango. Anywhere, Mexico, Peru, doesn't matter. As long as it's quasi ripe, you're good to go. We've got bok choy. We've got coconut milk. We've got chicken broth. I got organic spinach. I'm going to use basmati rice. Traditionally, it calls for a jasmine rice, but basmati is certainly no downgrade from the rice you need. We've got some chili peppers here. I've got some crushed red pepper, butter, minced garlic. I've got some lime juice. Typically in this recipe, the Filipinos who are very authentic in their own cooking, obviously, will use a fish sauce, whether it's the whole fish is like this that you mash and puree or just the pure liquid fish sauce. I am actually going to exclude that for my family's sake because unless you're born over there, you're going to have a hard time with fish sauce. It's extremely pungent. I like it on occasion, but the vast majority of Americans that grew up here are not going to do fish sauce. I promise you, you put that in there, you're going to have some unhappy campers at the table if you're just a, you know, the average American. We've got beautiful diced mango. We've got green, um, green onions or chives, if you will, bok choy. Um, last but not least, some fried garlic, fresh ginger, salt, pepper, all the good stuff we normally use. And the first part of this process is getting that chicken rendered off. That's our first part. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this type of kettle. It's a one pot process and you want to um, use about a tablespoon or so of butter. A tablespoon of butter right into your, your saucepan. In this case, it's this, this real nice um, Dutch oven that's lined with porcelain. Use the wooden spoon program. Don't put any metal in your Dutch oven. You know, you avoid the warning. <laughs> so here we are with that chicken. We're going to get here. I'm going to serve six people. I'm going to use five of those um, boneless thighs. Skin off, please. Way too much 
um, fat with the skin on. Real cheap. You can get a, you know, you can get a packet of this for uh, three fifty to five fifty on sale. You're going to feed your whole family or six people on about thirteen to fourteen dollars, and it's going to be a great meal. Just wash my hands after that chicken. Okay, wash off my spoon a little bit. Before we let that simmer, we're just going to do the basic salt, pepper. I like to use the butter underneath there versus oil. Why? Because the butter, the butter's natural. The butter doesn't scold your chicken, doesn't burn. I don't like canola oil, and it just when it just releases the juice much better than oil. So use that butter, lid on. We'll come back in a little bit and visit that. We'll see how it's going. Over here, we're we're going to process our mango. You know, uh, you want to use two whole mangoes. I've already rendered off one. You know, picking a mango, make sure it's quasi ripe. And you're going to get one of these fancy jigger peelers like this. You pull towards you. I think they work better than them other things. You know, we, we, we look at these mangoes and say, oh, they're so exotic and they're kind of expensive. But when you go to these other countries like the Philippines or, you know, Central America, there's mangoes in the streets. I mean, they really, they got trees everywhere. They just drop by the millions. And, uh, you know, you can buy like 20 mangoes for a dollar down there or over, over in the Philippines. We take for granted, you know, that we have foods here that, you know, they don't have. I mean, cherries and apples and things are indigenous to North America in plenty. But these fruits are so good for you. What makes this dish so nice is that that mango adds a tropical twist to it, and it um, it adds a certain sense of sweetness to the soup, almost almost like a Filipino sweet and sour kind of concept. You know, I I was sitting at a dinner table 26 years ago in Quakertown, PA, and a you know um, a native of PA family they worked as missionaries in the Philippines. You know, they, went to, they were in church, obviously, and they, they, the Lord's calling over there, and they came back. And this, this housewife, um, you know, was um, exposed to various parts of the, the Filipino quick cook, cooking cuisine, went down to the markets, learned from the natives, and she brought back this, uh, this soup. And she said, do you like mangoes? I said, yeah, I like mangoes. And then she said, do you like chickens? Said, yeah, well, I got a dish for you. And she brought out this mango chicken soup. And then over the years, I was friends with a lot of Filipinos in the military. You know, a lot of them in the Navy, you know, and uh, I, I was in the Pocono several years. I was friends with a whole group of Filipinos, and they had this, this uh, chicken, you know, arroz caldo kind of meal that, that utilized a chicken and broth and rice. So I said, what would it be like if I mixed, you know, the, the Filipino missionary soup with this traditional Filipino uh, a rose caldo, and then this this is what I've come up with. It's kind of a again a hybrid. So we've got that um, mango cooked off ginger. You know you want nice fresh ginger. You want to take all that brown stuff off. You don't want any of that brown stuff in your soup. When someone gets that in between their teeth, you've ruined the meal. And um, you know, and here's the other thing. This ginger thing, you don't want to go crazy with ginger. Very pungent. This is all you're going to use for ginger in the in the very near future. You're gonna you're gonna use a, a roughly, you know, a tablespoon, the most, of that ginger. Because when you have fresh ginger versus powder, very overbearing. Keep that ready for when uh, we we pull this thing together. I've got garlic already minced up for you. I'm gonna get my spinach, I got organic spinach here. You know, this meal is unbelievable in that it's got all the food groups. And if you're talking about healthy, I mean, there's nothing better when you're sick than to eat a chicken-based broth type soup that's fresh, not a bullion thing out of a jar or a can, something that's fresh, okay? Um, fried, fried garlic, I'm gonna show you where that comes in. You can, you can really start by just using this, but if you really wanna bring it to the the quintessential garlic flavor, it, you got to use some of this stuff. This is strictly bought at like a Filipino store, an Asian store. Now that chicken is, uh, is, coming, is coming into play here. What you want to do is you want to come back and, and turn it over because if not, it might stick on the bottom of that, that porcelain deal. And 
it'll be hard to get off even if you soak it and then it ruins the chicken. So we're, we've turned the chicken over at step number two. Got our ginger going. Now we're going to get ready for the base process. I've been criticized a little bit about not having my ingredients per se on the internet. So I'm going to try to accommodate that with you today. Five pieces of that chicken. I've got a um, one cup of rice here, the basmati rice. I've got about a small container of the spinach, two mangoes, one lime, uh, some bok choy. That's my next uh, Mario afterthought ingredient. I think it really adds a uniqueness to the dish. As the spinach is good enough, but the bok choy really, really brings that whole Asian world together. And I don't really claim to be an Asian cook. You know, I, I, just, I, love, the, I love the culture, but I'm, I'm really not a, a super Asian cook, Asian cook. But, you know, you can learn to adopt these principles these people live by. And if you look at the Filipino folks, they, they are very healthy people. And many people over in that part of the world. And why? Because they eat a lot of brothy stuff that's got these vegetables in it. And, you know, broth is great because when you reduce, you know, these vegetables down and it, it goes in that broth, it, it really goes to your bloodstream quicker. And it doesn't, it doesn't stick to you, if you will, like a lot of this gluten-filled American food and pasty, fatty, slimy stuff. You've, you've got to get live products in your food. So um, there's that bok choy getting ready. So we're seeing where the chicken is. I'm going to use a pair of tongs in a minute here. I'm going, to, I'm going to bring out that chicken. It's almost ready. I know I just violated the, the metal tongue thing rule I always tell you about. In the meantime, while that's cooking, I can, I can uh, get this lime going here. I'm going to need that at the end. Yeah, the Filipino people, very, uh, very unique people. Very, they're very happy people. They're very... Um, very loyal to each other. They travel in large groups. They have all kinds of clubs and, and uh, you know, around here. A lot of work as, as nurses and doctors and medical people from overseas. And a lot of them in the military, like I said, in the Navy. You know, they got a nice history to them. You know, unfortunately with the United States, I guess we didn't do real well in the Spanish-American War with them. But fortunately for them, after the war, you know, with MacArthur and all that, they gained a sense of independence. And we're, we're on good terms with Philippines. And, uh, Predominantly Catholic people, real nice family-oriented people, great cuisine, and um, I'm glad to know them. And I thank them for this recipe. So the chicken's almost ready to be pulled out. I'm going to pull these mostly cooked chickens out here. See, I'm a little concerned about that thing in the bottom there. All right, now we got that very important. We got that fat rendering off in the bottom. Now I'm going to put... Um, I'm going to put my garlic in there. Be, be generous with the garlic. Lots of good garlic. You've got that chicken fat and that butter kind of going there. Let it work a little bit. If it dries up on you a little bit, don't be afraid to add nature's greatest fat, a little butter. Mm -hmm. Now the next step in making the base for this Filipino mango chicken soup, believe it or not, is the, is the ginger. The ginger. You don't want to let that soften up because if it's, if, it's if it's too bitey, they're going to get that pungent ginger flavor in there. I'm already turning a little color right there. What I could do... Ah, just a little bit of water to keep things, just a little bit, just a dash, just to keep things moving. There's nothing wrong with that. There you go. That's what you're looking for. Simmering, reducing, ginger, butter, chicken fat. Here comes another magic ingredient. Coconut milk. Coconut milk. You're going to add about a half a cup of coconut milk. Just like that. Turn up high. Because the coconut milk is going to need to come to a boil. We'll swish that around a little bit. This gives that very authentic island-type tropical 
you know, Asian flavor to it that we're not used to in South Philly. So coconut milk, ginger, garlic, a little bit of that rendered fat down there. Bring it to a simmer. We'll come back over to our um, preparation area. You know, we're gonna, there's a special touch with these, these scallions. Um, you know, you should give them a rinse. By the way, on that, on that mango, I rinse everything with hot water and vin warm water and vinegar whenever I have a fruit because I don't know where that fruit's been. You know, you don't know what's pesticides. You don't know what's on those fruits. And in respects to the green onions, you want to you cut all those little bearded mustaches off, pull those little soldiers in a row, get rid of those mustaches. And this is going to be, this is going to be a nice little effect at the end. I'll show you. So we're going to get these little green onions, chives. I don't know what you call them, but we all know what they are. They're about a buck. I'm going to bring it down to the bottom here. Mix them all together. So you got that bouquet program. All right, swish your knife like that. You can discard this. I'm working fast, there's a lot of ingredients here. Okay, put ginger away. Excellent. So we'll push this aside just a little bit because eventually I think I'm gonna put my pot here. Now we're reducing over here, real nice. We're gonna take our chicken in the meantime. While that's reducing, the chicken has to um, you know what? We can go, we can go right in there with the bok choy. Now, let me put that aside for a second. Actually, need this cutting board. Actually, need this cutting board. Actually, bok choy right there. You need a big kitchen to make this stuff sometimes. I'll tell you. Chicken. You don't want big pieces of chicken like they have in original Filipino cooking because I don't, I don't know, it's, it's not as appetizing when you have to pull a big, big drumstick out that's been boiling in the, the Filipino stuff. For, they, and I know that's their culture. You know, they, eat, they eat stuff like balut, which is that you know, uh, aged, partially aged duck eggs, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of half egg and half have you know baby baby duck and I mean the bacalao which is kind of a salted codfish you know it's a very unique culture and unless you're accustomed to that style you know you might not find favor with it if you're American or Western but this way I've kind of I wouldn't say refined it a little bit but I, I just changed some of the methodology of how how the ingredients you know work together and they um, I find a little more a little bit more petite a little more appetizing this way so I can get this chicken out of the way. Let the water do its job there. Okay. Now I'm going to put over here, I'm going to put um, my mango in. I'm going to put, let that one high. I'm going to mix that around. The mango has to come down a little bit if it's firm. You want, you want the mango to um, get soft, okay? All right, and then we're going to put our rice. One cup of unrinsed rice, really important, because you're you're going to want the starchy effect on the rice when she starts to solidify. So, chicken's already cooked off. So, let's let that go for 30 seconds. I'll come back. I'll put the. I'll put the. Um, the chicken in there, get the final rendering down. This is going to feed about six or eight people, depending on size. Oh, nice, healthy bowl of this stuff. Okay. Chicken, mango, rice. You're saying, wow, it's uncooked rice with them. Well, it, it somehow or another, it works this way. The rice only needs 15 minutes at high speed. Once it gets high speed, then you can turn down the simmer just like you would normally when cooking rice by itself. Key ingredient, four cups of water. And I want to share this with you. I use a filter like this. I won't name the brand, but this filter is critical. You know, when the soup is 80% water, you want the highest quality water. Your whole body is 70% sulfur and water. So therefore, use the best water. This filter takes everything out that the municipality gives you or the well gives you that you don't want. And it's, it's all, not about taste. It is, but it's about quality. So you want four, four cups of real high grade water. It's going to add to your flavor, your soup. 
and it's going to give you the healthiest effects. I try to use as many organic or natural ingredients as possible. I, I know this is the real world. You can't get everything from you know, the super duper health food store supermarket because you're on a budget and you know, you're, you're in a hurry. And I get it. You got kids, you got obligations. But this is a one pot soup meal that it's going to work great for you. Um, we're, almost, we're almost down to the final parts and we're going to bring that to a boil. At this moment, we're going to add two cups of your favorite chicken broth into there. That's for more of that, more of that flavor, okay? And then we're going to go on to some light seasoning. You obviously want to put about a half a teaspoon or so of salt, black pepper, black pepper. I like to come back, believe it or not, for that caldo, or rose caldo, the hot program or the warm, here's where the warm comes in. I'll put, it, I'll put three chilies in there. And then we're going to get a pinch of the crushed red pepper. Don't be afraid of that. It, it, it works its way through. The sweet will counteract it. Crisp garlic that's already fried. Crisp garlic. This product lasts forever. You buy this, this will be on your shelf until Armageddon. You know, it'll be here forever. Uh, so, so you're going to work that through, bok choy and what have you, and we're going to come back in about two to three minutes and we're going to make this pot go. I did neglect to put that final, one of the final green ingredients in that bok choy. That's going to give you that vegetable body roughage scenario. We're going to finish it off with that organic spinach in a few minutes. Let the bok choy and the mango, let it all just marinate together. And it's, it's got to reduce, folks. Don't be afraid to bring it to a boil for at least 10 to 15 minutes. And then it's, it's going to make it real tender for you. Okay, folks out there in TV land, the last ingredient that we have for this marvelous Filipino soup is this baby spinach. Keep it whole. It's organic. It's, it's gorgeous. It looks like a lot of spinach, but it's going to boil down. You're going to put that right on top of your, uh, your boiling cauldron of gorgeous Filipino mango soup with all those special Asian tropical ingredients. This one's off the charts. You've never cooked anything like this really here in, in, uh, in Dutch country, uh, Allentown, Bethlehem, Lehigh Valley. Um, but this one here is, is for the record books for you. Everyone, you're going to win the church cook-off with this deal. They're going to love you for it. And they're going to think you lived in the Philippines or, or somewhere for 10 years. And look how that's just rendering down. Doesn't take the spinach too long to do its thing. You've got that hot, you've got that sweet, you've got the mango, the coconut, the garlic, and all these nutrients are just here for you. And if you eat that broth, you're going to get the vast majority of them. Granted, when you cook stuff down, you're going to lose the, some of the chlorophyll action of it, but you're going to get the residual vitamins of all this. It's not going down the drain like the old green bean thing, and, and uh, you know, you're, you're going to get the nutrients you deserve. So she's She's real close to being plated up. I think I'm going to turn her down or turn her off. She's done her thing already. I'm going to set you up over here on the table. We'll take this off, put it on this trusty little hot plate here. Turn the burner off. You're going to get a nice shallow bowl. The only thing we're missing here is one of them Asian type spoons that you get at the, the miso soup at the Japanese restaurant, but nonetheless, you'll get the effect. There we go, folks. Mango Filipino style arroz caldo. Get one of them little cherries in there for an accent. Serve six people, put on a plate. It can be a little messy. You're going to top it off, get this, folks, with those beautiful green onions. Gonna make it real tropical, a little citrus. Don't be afraid to get one of these jiggers here at the supermarket to get your little lime effect squirted around there. Your kids, your guests will absolutely love this authentic style hybrid dish brought to you by Mario at the Newburgh Deli. A Filipino mango soup with a tropical twist to it. And we thank the Filipinos for inventing this kind of food and we hope you've enjoyed this. Go to NewburghDeli.com to get my latest recipes and TV shows. And I want to thank our sponsor for all this great produce, um, Elias Market in Allentown and also in Bethlehem who provides the spinach, the bok choy, the garlic, the green onions, all the fresh goodness and the Asian and the 
uh, uh, Middle Eastern world and Mediterranean diet stuff that you need is Ray Elias Markets. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next time for another great episode. Take care and God bless. Have you ever experienced water damage inside your home or business due to a leaky pipe or a slow drip behind a wall? Be smart. Stop the leak before it happens using the latest smart app technology. With SmartFlow Pro, your all-in-one water security system, you can monitor your pressure, water temperature, water flow, and detect leaks by phone, receiving emails, texts, or push notices, and use the automated shutoff to stop every drip from wherever you are. Are you ready for 2020? Keep your home or business 100% leak-free with SmartFlow Pro. Here we are again, folks, another great little mini-episode of Mario from the Newberg Deli. You know, you just finished that great uh, main course meal, and you're trying to figure out, you got the starch figured out, you're trying to figure out what kind of green or, or, or vegetable can I accommodate with this meal that's fast, that's nutritious, that most people would like. And I'll tell you, this one fits in most categories. It's the authentic spinach salad. How do you make a spinach salad? Baby spinach. You get it anywhere. I get mine from Elias Markets in Allentown and Bethlehem. And it's fresh, it's organic, it's super with vitamin, with vitamin D and B, and it's got iron galore. Great roughage, vitamin C, antioxidants, right in the bowl, folks. I'm going to cook about three or four right here, right in the bowl. My next application, insertion, if you will, is going to be these black olives. You can probably buy them pre-sliced. Some black olives. Pick them up with your trusty knife, right in there. Next part, it's going to be that trusty olive oil. You got to use organic first cold press, folks. If not, you're getting robbed nutrition. That's what we're going to use here. This is a salad. I know typically a salad has vinegar in it or some other sort of counteract to the oil, but oil only in this salad. We're going to go with fresh garlic, super fine diced. Don't go crazy with it because, you know, later on you're going to repeat. But in this case, just a little bit like that. Garlic is very good for you. It's not only the, you know, the Italian cologne factor and the anti-vampire factor, but it is the world's greatest um, antibiotic in that it kills all kinds of germs, bacteria, what have you. Makes you better again. Grandma was right. Parmesan cheese right on top. You can use Lugadella type uh, Pecorino Romano. You can use this nice aged Parmesan type cheese. Whatever cheese you like. Salt. Beautiful black pepper. Fresh ground is always good. You can add a vinegar if you want. I would prefer like a red wine vinegar, just a dash if you will, just to sort of, uh, again, complement the oil. And you want to you wanna mix it generously. If it looks a little dry, which this one may be, don't be afraid to give it a little more of that phenolic qualities, lubricating qualities of the oil. Great for your intestines. Great for your blood pressure, great for your skin. Helps the epidermis, lubricates it. Great for your hair, great for your digestion. Just incredible. Gotta, you gotta live on olive oil. I don't care where you were born, what your budget is. You gotta live on olive oil. You certainly wanna pick the right olive oil. You know, not all olive oils are created equally. We sell a pretty good brand down at the Newburgh Deli. It's called Mario's Newburgh Deli Oil. It's imported from Avellino, Italy. It's hand-picked the state oil. You gotta try it. It's $19 for Three quarters of a liter, very high-end boutique type oil right here, as you see. And uh, that's that's uh, a half a liter there, the 500 milliliters. Or excuse me, 375. The other one we have is like three times that size. That one's uh, 9.99 at the deli. So come on down and see us. Here's that, uh, that beautiful Greek salad that you're just gonna love as we plate it up. Get the olives in there, top it off. Look at that, isn't that pretty? That is just, you know, if you wanna, just for show purposes, put that on there. We've got, gotta like garlic. But if you don't like garlic, leave the garlic out. You know, garlic powder or something else. But it's a real nice salad. And all the best to you. We'll see you next time. God bless.